Welcome back uh, to online lecture eight of unit number two, thermal design of refrigeration system components and uh, expansion devices. Uh, expansion device is the fourth basic component of refrigeration system. Up till now we have discussed uh, uh, the types of uh, compressors, evaporators and condensers. So this is the fourth type where we will discuss the types of expansion devices as well. This is just a revision purpose. But the main crux of the topic that is uh, thermostatic expansion valve, uh, their operating characteristics, uh, the types of charging of sensing bulb of thermostatic expansion wall, and uh, the hunting, what is hunting of thermostatic expansion wall, and what are the fa factors depending on the hunting. So these are the uh, points uh, mainly important for the syllabus point of view. But we quickly go through the different types of expansion devices as well. The expansion devices used in refrigeration system can be divided into two categories is fixed opening type or variable opening type. As the name implies in fixed opening type the flow area remains fixed while in variable opening type the flow area changes with changing mass flow rates. Uh, there are basically seven types of refrigerant expansion walls and these are no, hand operated expansion valve, which is also called a manual operated expansion valve, capillary tubes, orifice, uh, then constant pressure or automatic expansion valve, thermostatic expansion valve, and float type expansion valve. There are uh, two types of float type expansion valve one uh, high side float valve and low side float valve. And the seventh one is the electronic expansion valve. So, the first three uh, types uh, they fall in the category of fixed opening type. And the remaining four, they fall in the category of variable opening time. Uh, manual expansion wall or hand operated expansion wall, uh, these uh, walls are generally used in large installation uh, where the mass flow rate requirement is high. Uh, so with the help of this particular wall, uh, this, uh, this is similar wall which is used in a uh, water system or water uh, um, pumping system. And it's uh, the main role uh, is to expand the refrigerant from condenser to evaporator. Uh, so accordingly, the setting is done. So manually, we can uh, set this particular condenser and evaporator pressure across this particular wall. Uh, but uh, the, uh, these walls are always associated with uh, some manual or uh, solenoid wall, solenoid operated on-off walls, uh, because uh, we cannot close this particular wall once it, we can only set the pressure pressure across this wall. Uh, so, in association with this wall, the solenoid operated on off walls are also used. So, main purpose of solenoid operated on off wall is to uh, start and stop the flow. And with the help of this wall, this wall only controls the pressure ratio across the uh, system that is condenser pressure ratio to evaporative pressure ratio. Uh, it is simple to use, uh, but generally prefer for large installations where we can manually adjust the flow rate as well as uh, uh, the pressure settings. The second type of uh, fixed opening type that is a capillary tube. Uh, a capillary tube is nothing but long narrow tube of constant diameter. And these uh, capillary tubes are generally used for small systems like a refrigerator or uh, small capacity. Uh, means one tier or less than one tier capacity window air conditioners uh, because as the capacity increases uh, its uh, use is little bit complicated because the fixing of cap capillary tube is little bit complicated process uh, uh, that's why uh, and it is generally a uh, uh, small diameter it is not suitable for large installation because uh, the restriction of the mass flow rate so you find capillary tube application only in small but the major advantage of capillary tube because whenever this is we use capillary tube in the as expansion devices uh, there is a pressure equalization takes place before this uh, starting of the compressor so capillary tube allows us to use the low starting top electric motor in the compressor so that's why in the small systems it is used uh, but uh, the care has to be uh, uh, in that particular system suppose if we have to operate a refrigerator uh, so uh, suddenly if the power goes off and the power comes immediately within a fraction of a second if it uh, or comes back 
then in that circumstances there is a possibility of motor burning because already capillary tube it takes some time to equalize the pressure of condenser and evaporator so at the starting there is no pressure uh, ratio across the compressor uh, so low starting torque motor it allows to use but if there is a sudden power failure and sudden comeback of the power then in that case the pressure ratio across the compressor is more and uh, uh, so due to sudden load on the compressor or motor there is a possibility of motor burning because of carrying high start starting torque Recommend that, that particular question. So that is the drawback. Suppose if the system is provided with the capillary tube as an expansion device, uh, so if you switch off the switch off the refrigerator, then uh, don't switch on immediately. So take some time. That is after five to ten minutes, you switch uh, switch on the refrigerator back. So this is a limitation of the capillary tube because of the capillary tube uh, systems. Are generally provided with low starting torque motor uh, for the compressor. Uh, then this is orifice. It's similar to our uh, orifice meter. Uh, so it regulates the flow uh, with a constant pressure ratio. Uh, but again, uh, mainly applicable for where the constant pressure ratio is used. Uh, uh, then under uh, the category of variable area flow rate, uh, so. Uh, this is the constant pressure or automatic expansion valve. Uh, so this type of valve, it regulates the flow rate based on the pressure because uh, once the setting is there, it um, supply the constant flow rate. But if the pressure increases, it closes the valve. Pressure increases because of increasing cooling load. So actually system demands more refrigerant, but in that circumstances, it closes the valve and uh, it regulates the uh, less mass flow rate. On the other side, if the load decreases, uh, the system demands less refrigerant. But in this case, the spring pressure is greater than evaporator pressure, and uh, the spring forces the diaphragm down, and the wall opens, and the more flow uh, takes place, which is not required. Uh, so such contradictory behavior of automatic expansion wall restricted its use for variable load conditions. Uh, so this. Automatic expansion wall is especially suitable for a constant pressure uh, conditions uh, to maintain a constant supply of refrigerant, but not suitable for variable conditions. And because of these limitations, uh, nowadays automatic expansion walls are not used in practice. Earlier days, before the invention of thermostatic expansion wall, uh, they were used. Uh, this is the most uh, popular or uh, most commonly used expansion device that is thermostatic expansion device. Uh, it mainly regulates the flow rate based on the degree of superheat. Uh, so it maintains the constant degree of superheat as well. So with the help of this uh, capillary tube and connected to the filler bulb. So filler bulb is filled with the liquid of same char characteristic of that of refrigerant. Uh, so this is generally fitted at the outlet of the evaporator or then the suction line. Uh, so based on the setting, so initially with the help of this screw and adjustable spring, the setting is done uh, for, a main, for maintaining a constant uh, degree of superheat. If the degree of superheat uh, is increased beyond the setting limit, in that case, uh, it forces this bellow down and the wall opens. So more quantity of refrigerant flows through the evaporator. And that generally happens because as the load increases, uh, degree of superheat increases. Uh, so uh, this uh, that particular pressure, Fp is greater than Fs or Fp. In that case, the bellow moves down and it forces the needle down and more flow rate is possible. Uh, on the other side, if the load decreases, degree of uh, superheat also decreases. So the reverse thing happens. Uh, so that's why uh, it accommodated the variable load condition as well. And also it uh, makes sure that there is no liquid droplet entering into the compressor because it maintains that constant uh, degree of superheat here uh, and also adjusts the load condition as well. Uh, the evaporator pressure has a uh, little because the spring will take care of that. So it doesn't work on change in evaporator pressure. So it works on a degree of superheat because degree of superheat 
is activate the uh, or it regulate the mass flow rate through the expansion device. Uh, so uh, because of its versatility and because of its adjusting characteristics, uh, this is most extensively used in uh, small systems or small capacity system, medium capacity system, and some cases it is some large system in package units. Uh, this thermostatic expansion wall large use. These are generally associated with uh, DX type evaporators, not in flooded type evaporators. So all DX type evaporators are generally associated with uh, this uh, thermostatic expansion wall uh, because the DX type evaporator, uh, the outlet condition of the refrigerant is essentially a superheated. That's why these expansion devices are associated with the DX type evaporator. So this is a pictorial view of uh, thermostatic expansion wall. So this is a diaphragm. We can say this is a filler bulb. This is generally mounted at the outlet of the evaporator. Uh, and uh, this, this is a capillary tube. Uh, this is adjustable. So this is uh, inlet. And you can say uh, the screw is adjusted and the outlet. So the operating characteristic uh, uh, of how uh, the, this thermostatic expansion wall works. <coughs> The operating characteristic of thermostatic expansion or it is also called as a capacity superheat curve. Uh, so uh, this is a curve uh, which gives the variation of capacity versus variation of opening or degree of superheat. Uh, so there are uh, different types of superheat uh, avail uh, available So in those characteristic curves. Uh, so this is on the x-axis, uh, y-axis we have a refrigeration load. On the x-axis, we have a degree of superheat uh, Fahrenheit. Uh, so first thing, they, uh, at this particular situation, uh, uh, the it is called as uh, superheat or uh, static superheat because if the degree of superheat as this at is a delta T S S, that is called as a static uh, superheat. In this particular position, uh, there is no flow rate. So as the no flow rate, no refrigeration capacity, refrigeration capacity is zero. Uh, so the wall remains closed. Uh, and the static superheat delta T S uh, doesn't have a sufficient pressure to open the wall. So suppose it, uh, the needle is rest on this particular spring. So the spring pressure is set. So it, uh, whatever the pressure here, because of uh, the delta T S S, uh, it doesn't have that sufficient pressure to open this particular wall. And uh, it, it, it remains in closed position. Uh, generally, the static superheat has a value of 2.2 to 4 degrees Celsius. Now, as the uh, degree of superheat increases, the wall starts opening. So the needle uh, moves down and the refrigerant flow starts. Uh, so from the condenser to the evaporator to uh, throttling. At the same time, it reduces the pressure as well. So uh, it starts, and as the pressure uh, degree of superheat increases, because of increasing load, it the wall opens. So this is the line where, uh, the, as the degree of superheat increases, uh, the wall opens, and the wall opens at this particular position. So delta TO is nothing but, uh, this is a static superheat, and delta TO is, indicates the opening superheat. Uh, the superheat required to open the expansion wall from a closed position, this is a closed position, to fully open position. So for this delta TO, the wall is fully closed at this particular position and wall is fully open at this, this particular position. So uh, generally at the full refrigeration load or design load, cooling load. Can, so this is our design load. Uh, so this is delta TO and the addition of a uh, static superheat and the opening superheat that is called as uh, the setting of thermostatic expansion wall. But in some way, uh, the operating uh, superheat falls. Uh, so the oper uh, opening, this is opening superheat that is delta TO. In some way, operating superheat uh, usually has a value of 3.3 uh, to 4 degrees Celsius. And the term uh, delta TOP uh, indicates the Operating superheat at a specific refrigeration load. Uh, this is operating superheat. Uh, this is a maximum superheat, which is called as a, so. This is operating superheat. And uh, a superheat setting uh, setting of thermostatic that is the addition of uh, 
static superheat plus opening superheat. So the addition sum of these two that is called as a uh, superheat setting of thermostatic expansion. And this generally uh, this setting is taking place because accordingly the setting takes place. That is the uh, this is a fixed settings and uh, where the wall remains close and where the refrigeration system maintains a constant delta T. If it exceeds the wall opens and uh, right from the fully closed position to fully open position, whatever the delta T required. So that delta T is nothing but uh, opening delta T. And the addition of these two, it is called as a superheat setting of the thermostat. So at this particular setting, the thermostat uh, is set. So setting of thermostatic expansion will with the help of this uh, adjustable spring. It's a slightly a critical process because it fall uh, while setting uh, uh, the technician must observe this characteristic curves. Uh, so for a factor of safety, some uh, nominal delta T is also because even uh, uh, allows some space of degree of superheat, more degree of superheat. So that particular phase is used. That is nominal superheat. So nominal superheat, the term uh, T norm indicates the nominal superheat. For safety considerations, generally this nominal uh, degree of superheat is maintained as 1.1. TRL to 1.4 TRL. So these are the different uh, delta T superheatings are maintained uh, and associated with this characteristic curves. And beyond this particular point, there is no uh, change in refraction load irrespective of your uh, degree of superheat. Refraction load ends here, maintains. So accordingly, uh, this wall opens because uh, this mainly a degree of superheat is a driving force. For opening and closing of this uh, expansion wall, this thermostatic expansion, wall. and depending upon the degree of superheat, uh, the wall opens or closes. Uh, uh, so it is fully open at the setting uh, setting point, that is setting of thermostatic expansion wall, and beyond that point also uh, there is a possibility of de degree of superheat as well. So this provides some excess degree of superheat, but uh, due to that uh, there is no uh, increase in flow rate happens. This allows us to maintain more degree of superheat, uh, which may or may not be beneficial depending upon the requirement. So depending upon the requirement, uh, this portion, because during this portion, uh, in fact, uh, the uh, refraction load increases slightly, but uh, almost the wall position remains constant. So it keeps that reflect wall position open for that particular process. So to avoid the hunting of Refrigerant or to earn the fluctuations, some uh, space is provided, and that is generally 1.1 to 1.4 times uh, delta dr. Uh, so, this is operating characteristic of uh, thermostatic expansion wall. So, at the time of setting this operating characteristic uh, or this uh, behavior is observed initially, then the setting is done. Uh, then the charging of sensing bulb is also an important uh, process. Uh, generally, at the time of charging, uh, this is a bulb is evacuated and charged. Uh, so there are three types of charging. That is uh, limited charge, cross charge, and straight charge. Uh, so in fact, it is limited charge, straight charge, and cross charge. Limited charge means uh, the only limited quantity. So uh, if the quantity is limited, then in some uh, Superating conditions, uh, it may goes to the superated means whatever the uh, liquid available, it may goes to the superated state. So that's why it is called as a limited charge. In straight charge uh, system, generally uh, the liquid used in the sensing bulb is same as the refrigerant, so that is called as a straight charge. And in cross charge, uh, the liquid is slightly uh, different. Uh, it has uh, means uh, the power fluid which is used in sensing bulb, it has certain different characteristics. So flat PT diagrams are there, maintain that. Uh, so uh, there, because of their different characteristics, so this is limited liquid charge. So what will happen at the liquid charge is limited. So to, uh, it's uh, this is the point where the refrigerant starts boiling. So till the uh, 
entire liquid evaporates it follows the straight line so the pressure is proportional to the temperature so the constant delta t is maintained but after point b uh, the, the uh, point b is the point at which the entire refrigerant in the sensing bulb so this is sensing bulb so entire refrigerant in the sensing bulb is evaporated and beyond that point whatever the heat is absorbed that leads to in increase its temperature so the uh, liquid in the sensing bulb gets superheated but it doesn't maintain the uniform uh, delta t so that's why limited uh, so beyond this particular point the delta t is not uniform or it not uh, varies in proportion to the pressure so it uh, slightly gives some fluctuations because here uh, the demand expectation is more in that case it doesn't provide that particular force because of degree of superheat so in the superheating zone generally the degree of superheat achieved is very less uh, so that's why uh, uh, generally this is not a recommended liquid charge in the straight charge uh, generally the same ref uh, refrigerant is used in the sensing bulb uh, so this is a flat characteristic curves uh, pressure versus temperature so uh, it gives a non uniform delta t so again in this case as the, especially at the higher pressures it gives low delta t so low delta t means no low mass flow rate in the refrigerant um, through the through the expansion device and uh, that's why in some cases if the expectation is more uh, this particular driving force because delta t is the driving force degree of superheat is the driving force it provides less quantity of refrigerants and uh, may causes the problem suppose for example 40 degrees celsius minus 40 degrees celsius evaporating temperature in the delta t uh, create their delta t developed by the uh, sensing bulb fluid is 10k while on the higher temperature side that is 5 degrees celsius evaporating temperature the delta t is only 3k so uh, 3k means uh, the amount of force required to push the needle down it reduces as the pressure increases so it gives non uniform degree of superheat with the uniform pressure or uniform variation in the pressures uh, so that's why the straight charge is also uh, not a recommended uh, case so to overcome these drawbacks uh, generally uh, the different fluid is used uh, which is having a different uh, characteristics because for the same suppose for its boiling point for the same pressure its boiling point is uh, suppose this is a refrigerant uh, characteristic the pressure versus boiling te temperature so if the refrigerant boils at this particular temperature suppose this particular temperature your power fluid boils at higher temperature so higher boiling point temperature fluid is being used and also a uh, fluid is having at one particular boiling point it has a low vapor pressure so uh, generally uh, the flat capacity curve so flat curve uh, fluid is recommended as a power fluid power fluid is nothing but a fluid which is used in the sensing bulb so this is a characteristic so with the help of this arrangement it maintains the constant delta t throughout so constant delta t is maintained for any pressures so even at higher pressure also it gives the same uh, constant pressure because it boils at a higher pressure higher temperature it boils at low pressure low temperature so it maintains a uh, higher uh, or same almost uniform delta t for the uniform pressures pressure difference so that's why cross charge uh, system or char charging is uh, recommended amongst both, uh, all that is it is recommended in, uh, instead of uh, limited charge or the straight charge uh, there is a problem of hunting of uh, thermostatic expansion oh, hunting is nothing but uh, a cyclic fluctuation in suction superheat uh, due to varying uh, refrigeration load uh, so because of refrigeration load in the system uh, uh, superheat hunting takes place because there is continuous fluctuation of superheating so continuous on of excessive opening and closing of uh, expansion wall happens and it it causes the reduction in capacity as well as efficiency of the system so it is not desirable process because uh, uh, commonly uh, this this is a pro common problem uh, generally facing in refrigeration air conditioning service technicians 
and uh, the reason for this uh, hunting is uh, generally the expansion wall is oversized uh, the oversized expansion device is used so in that case uh, uh, it overcompensate uh, because of the oversize so it uh, supply more quantity of refrigerant uh, the openings are more uh, bigger so oversized wall it causes then uh, incorrect charge selection so incorrect charge selection because uh, generally a uh, cross charge system uh, cross charge system says uh, provides the uh, controlling characteristics uh, or the st uh, uh, stable characteristics of this under charge if the system is under charge it is not charged with the then in that case uh, also there is a possibility of hunting and the location of bulb or so the poor bulb location generally it is recommended to have a location of the bulb at the side base of the uh, uh, suction piping not at the top not at the bottom or correct sensing of the degree of sutra and uh, these are the factors which affects so mainly we can say the wall size degree of sutra so smaller degree of sutra may causes uh, the hunting because of very uh, low deviation that's why some nominal uh, delta t sup is used to accommodate that uh, case sensing bulb cross charge tends to prevent the hunting and the location of sensing bulb a properly selected sensing bulb location often minimizes the hunting the sensing bulb should be located at the side of the horizontal section of the suction line immediately after the evaporator outlet so that it doesn't sense the oil temperature or liquid refrigerant at the bottom of the tube so neither top nor bottom it should be at the side way so that uh, can uh, so these are the factors which can uh, limit the hunting or we can prevent uh, the hunting uh, so proper size if you use uh, then a slightly uh, higher degree of superheat if it is used then cross charge uh, charging system is used and also the location so the side way, side location is preferred then the next type that is a high side and a low side expansion device float type expansion wall so float type expansion wall uh, there are two types that is this is a high side because it regulates because this is a expansion wall but uh, as the condensing uh, liquid decreases uh, uh, it uh, generally close this expansion wall and uh, as the condensing temperature increases it opens uh, so the level increases it opens and uh, the flow is possible reverse thing happen here if the level decreases uh, actually it opens and if the low level increases it closes the wall uh, so low side expand low side level control means or this is called as a low side uh, float wall it controls the level of accumulator which is connected to the Uh, this is connected to the evaporator so evaporator and uh, high side it uh, maintains the level of condenser fluid so this type of expansion walls are especially used in a flooded evaporator where uh, the liquid is flooded with evaporator uh, or the all the evaporator piping is uh, flooded with liquid refrigerant so such type of uh, evaporator generally this float type expansion wall and depending upon the control of level uh, there are two categories high side uh, float wall and low side float wall uh, this is the seven type that is electronic expansion wall uh, it mainly consists of uh, a needle and the heater assembly so needle open uh, because of uh, if the heater is energized and this heater is connected in series to the sensing thermistor thermistor is the uh, device having a low coefficient of expansion thermal expansion so because as it comes in contact with the superheated fluid it gets heated and due to heat its uh, resistance decreases and the current increases due to increasing current the more current is flow through the uh, heater part so as the heater energizes the needle moves up and the more quantity of refrigerant flows so it meet the requirement so again uh, if the more quantity of refrigerant flows through the evaporator 
what will happen that sensing bulb cools as the sensing bulb cools its resistance increases so low current flows through this circuit as the low current flows through this particular circuit the heater deenergizes and the needle valve closes this particular valve so this uh, this way it controls the flow rate or regulate the flow rate uh, this particular valve can be used in two ways as well so generally in four way valve these are used so this is a typical uh, sectional view of this is a heater needle and the flow rate electronic expansion valve these are small devices used in a small system or medium system and is provided with this thermistor on heater needle part all these things Uh, so this is a thermostatic or uh, electronic expansion valve. Uh, so this is workings given, uh, not in the syllabus, only for your information. Uh, at the end of this particular topic, uh, you should be able to discuss different types of expansion valves. We have discussed there are seven types of expansion valve. We have discussed mainly in two categories. Uh, that is fixed opening type and variable opening type. Uh, uh, you should be able to. Uh, discuss these types their pictorial views as well as their applications small medium scale or large scale their limitations or important features uh, the main part that is uh, you should be able to explain the operating characteristic of uh, thermostatic expansion valve so thermostatic expansion valve the main driving force is degree of superheat so there are different degree of superheat associated with thermostatic expansion valve Uh, mainly a static a degree of superheat opening degree of superheat operating degree of superheat then uh, uh, setting of uh, uh, degree of superheat of thermostatic expansion valve uh, that is which is the summation of uh, static superheat and opening superheat and operating uh, degree of superheat and nominal degree of superheat these are the degree of superheat associated with uh, the operating curves and how it behaves uh, so initially uh, Uh, before installing uh, the thermostatic expansion valve it is uh, necessary to observe these characteristics and uh, then accordingly you can uh, set the thermostatic expansion valve also we have discussed uh, you should be able to discuss uh, the different types of charge of sensing bulbs uh, mainly limited charge uh, then straight charge and cross charge their uh, characteristics uh, how uh, it behaves for different charges and which uh, charge system is recommended uh, then what is hunting of thermostatic expansion valve that is a continuous fluctuation of flow rate through the expansion valve uh, that is called as hunting which is not desirable because it uh, needs to reduce the capacity and efficiency of the system uh, to minimize the hunting there are some factors which affects the hunting mainly size of the thermostatic expansion valve and charging of uh, the system then uh, so generally if the uh, under charge is there then in that case also hunting happens then the third one that is a uh, charging system that is a uh, charging of sensing bulb uh, if the uh, if the charging is limited or straight in that case there is a possibility of hunting but the cross cross charge uh, uh, provide uh, prevent the hunting and also the location of sensing bulb so these are the factors which affects the hunting and also to uh, if we monitor these factors or control these factors definitely the hunting can be prevented so this is a small topic uh, a small uh, topic uh, we can say uh, and the most important part of this exam point of view most important part that is related with the thermostatic expansion so remaining types we have discussed only for your uh, information and to revise uh, your types that you already discussed Previous, uh, uh, previous level that is preparation R S S level. With this, we have uh, completed this topic. The next topic, uh, next lecture, we will uh, discuss the types of cooling tower. Actually, this is the last, uh, like uh, that was that will be the last lecture of unit number two. Uh, thank you very much.